Nothing at an airport is an accident. Every little design detail is a psychological trigger. Countless hours of experimentation and studies have been conducted to determine the color schemes of an airport, and they even paid special attention to the fonts used on the signs. Even the TSA agents have these subtle little techniques to see if you're a suspicious character. If you don't mind traveling to a larger airport, then you should definitely do it. Airports like the ones in New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles are like giant travel hubs. There are hundreds of flights, and the price of a ticket will be substantially cheaper compared to the airports in smaller metro areas. And of course, you won't just save money, you'll save on those annoying layovers as well. If you have to bring some luggage to the airport, make sure you stand out. If you've noticed, most people at an airport will have either black, gray, or blue luggage. Instead of this, go for some flashy colors like red, yellow, or purple. The reason we're telling you this is because you'll get in and out of baggage claim much quicker if you do this. You'll easily see your luggage on the conveyor. Remember this scene? Any second now. Well, it's not too far from the truth. Like. In the U.S., aside from the TSA scanners they employ, there are also behavior detection officers. They keep a close eye on people looking for some quote-unquote irregularities. If they sense that someone's acting suspiciously, they'll not hesitate to take you in. If you want to lose a lot of money, go to the exchange office at an airport. The rates are so bad that when exchanging $100, you can lose as much as $20 in the deal. This is why we'd strongly advise against swapping currency at the airport. If possible, spend the entire trip paying with credit or debit cards. Or if you need cash for the local bazaar or the taxi, then get out of the airport and try to locate the first fee-free ATM you can find or go to the bazaar or local shop outside of the airport and ask them to exchange the dollars, euros, or pounds you have in your wallet. You might be traveling in a country that doesn't have Uber or Lyft. At this point, you should always get an airport taxi. Believe us, they're going to be the cheapest and safest option. However, if you're going to a country which has an online taxi service like Uber or Lyft, then make sure to check those out before you get into an airport taxi. If you find one, it won't be surprising to get the same $30 ride for just 15 bucks. What about the psychological design of an airport? Well, let's talk about the fonts. 75% of the airports use one of three fonts, Helvetica, Frutiger, or Clearview. They're all sans serif. This and the size of their font makes them easier to read from a distance. After several studies, airports know that every time you make the letter an inch, 2.5 centimeters bigger, you increase the visibility by 40 feet, 12 meters. This means a three inch, 7.5 centimeter letter will be visible from 120 feet, 36 meters away. They also pay close attention to smashing that like button, just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, they pay close attention to the shape and the color of the signs. This is a subliminal message that tells the passenger they're on the right track to their gate. If they see a differently shaped sign, they'll know they're in the wrong place. The reason you see all those giant windows in every airport is threefold. First, they know that natural light helps you de-stress, particularly necessary at an airport. Second, there's a study indicating that natural light encourages people to buy more. Third, it makes it easier for people to navigate around an airport. The third one is the most important. After all, you don't want to be stuck in a maze with no way out. The design of the airport will help you get through security, get to your gate, and board the plane as easily as possible. If you're ever confused and wonder where you need to go when you're departing from an airport, keep this simple rule in mind. Departures are upstairs, arrivals are downstairs. Why? Gravity. When you arrive at your destination country, you want to get out of the airport as quickly as possible. Moving all the luggage to the second or third floor of the airport is wasteful, so they'll place the carousel on the bottom floor and get you out the door as quickly as possible. When you're departing, almost all airports place the departure gates on the upper floor. This way they can use the vertical space to build more floors, which means more stores, which means more buying opportunities. Ka-ching! TSA agents are generally fairly quiet. That's because their job is to keep the passengers safe, not to be chatty Cathy. So if you ever come across a TSA agent who's smiling and talkative all of a the sudden, then you better beware. It's not because they find you fascinating. Usually it's because they're conducting a test. This is a behavior inspection technique. In other words, they're talking to you to clarify if you're suspicious or not. If you don't meet their standards, they'll send you back. If you've ever paid attention, you'll notice that the tiles at the check-in are gray. Gray is a neutral color. It means business. Usually the floors are tiled because they mean move. 
When you see carpet and chairs, humans subconsciously feel like they have to smash that subscribe button and ring the notifications bell. But no, in all seriousness, humans feel a lot more relaxed. Since they want you to be relaxed on the flight, there's generally carpet and seats before the departure gate. At Heathrow Airport, London, there's a giant metallic sculpture called Slipstream. Sacramento Airport has a giant red bunny. Why is this? Well, it's simple. Usually, these sculptures will be tied in with the country's culture and heritage, like the Bruce Lee art piece at Hong Kong International Airport. But also, they're practical. Whenever you want to meet up with someone, tell them you're going to be waiting for them next to the Big Red Bunny at Sacramento Airport, and they'll find you. There's a reason your airport has walkways that lean to the left. They know most people in the world are right-handed. This means passengers will be carrying their suitcase in their right hand and making them walk to the left because of the imbalance. Now, if the walkway is leaning to the left, this makes walking so much easier. Of course, there's the addition of shops, and they're almost always on the right side of the walkway, making you look at them and hopefully see something you like as you pass by. Here's a good way to save money. We've all been told that it's good practice to arrive about two hours early so we can clear security in time. For some, this might seem like a helpful tip. For us, it's just another marketing ploy. If you're traveling often, you don't have to spend two hours at the airport. They tell you this because the stores at the airport won't fill up by themselves, you know. If you've ever been at the airport early, you know that it doesn't take you two hours to go through security. Instead, you'll generally clear fairly fast, and you'll have about an hour or so of free time to kill, preferably at the coffee shop with those blueberry scones. But those who fly frequently know this airport tactic, so how do they get around it? Simple, they check in online, they're security ready, which means they don't wear belts and jackets and wear shoes that are easy to remove, and they only bring a carry-on. Water is an expensive commodity, especially at an airport. If you've ever bought a disposable bottle of Evian or Fiji, you know that the price for a bottle can be as high as five bucks. If you don't want to fork over that cash, then listen to this. Just take an empty plastic water bottle from home. Once you're at the airport, you can go to the reusable water refill stations, usually located at or near the restrooms, and save $5. Since we're on the subject of saving money, here's another psychological trick airports will use to get into your wallet. It's called revenue seating. If you're confused by the term, that's kind of the point. Next time you're traveling, pay close attention to where the comfortable seats are. You won't be surprised to find that the plush sofas and the rocking chairs are near the retail zones. Revenue seating is a practice airports use to get you to spend money during the golden hour. This is the first hour after you clear security. Bye for now.